Well, hey there, future nurses. Welcome back to Med Monday. Sorry, it's a little bit tardy. I'm working a travel assignment right now, and I've had to work extra. And so I wasn't able to get this out on time, and I really apologize, but better late than never. So let's go ahead and get started. So this week's medication is amiodarone. And remember, we are doing a complete cardiac uh, theme this month uh, because of the American Heart Association's Go Red for Women at the beginning of the month. So amiodarone is one of those cardiac medications. It has several trade names, so I didn't include those because typically we just call it amiodarone. And when we wanna sound cool, we call it amio. It's functional class. It's an antidysrhythmic. It can be given PO, IV, or IV push. It prolongs the myocardial cell action potential and refractory period. It's non-competitive alpha and beta adrenergic inhibiting, inhibiting increasing PR and QT intervals and it decreases conduction from the SA to the AV node through the bundle of His and the Purkinje fibers. So basically what this medication does is it slows down that conduction. Now, why do we give this medication? What is the indication? Unstable ventricular tachycardia, SVT, and atrial fibrillation with RVR or rapid ventricular response. Why is this medication contraindicated? Pregnancy, breastfeeding, hypersensitivity to amio slash iodine, cardiogenic shock, second and third degree AV blocks. And remember, second degree, we have Mobitz type one and type two. And what can happen if we give this medication, it can cause our second degree, uh, Mobitz one or Mobitz two, to go into a third degree or even sinus arrest. And if our patient is in third degree block, it can cause them to go into sinus arrest. And lastly, bradycardia. Our side effects, remember, are non-life-threatening, include headache, dizziness, fatigue, ataxia, hypotension, bradycardia, photosensitivity and photophobia, erectile dysfunction, and hypo or hyperthyroid. Adverse reactions, and these remember are life-threatening, include sinus arrest, CHF, dysrhythmias, hepatotoxicity, pulmonary toxicity, including ARDS and fibrosis. Nursing considerations. This medication does have a black box warning, and that is for hepatotoxicity and cardiac dysrhythmias and pulmonary toxicity. We want to monitor our chem panels, our liver function, and our renal function is going to be in those chemistry panels, so I didn't include that. We also want to monitor for hypo and hyperthyroidism. We want to monitor our patient's heart rate, their rhythm, and their blood pressure. We also want to monitor for therapeutic response. And we want to remember that patients given digoxin, sildenafil, which when called sildenafil, it is used for pulmonary hypertension, but its trade name is also Viagra. And when it's called Viagra, it's used for erectile dysfunction. Simvastatin, remember this is a statin medication, and warfarin. So what happens, it's a little bit complicated, but there's a, an enzyme in the liver, and the amiodarone can block that enzyme, and that enzyme is needed to break these medications down. And when it blocks that, that enzyme, these medications are, don't clear the system. And so then we can have digitoxicity. Um, sildenafil and pulmonary hypertension is used to um, open up those uh, pulmonary arteries. 
And so we can, and it reduces blood pressure, so we can have reduced blood pressure. Simvastatin, they'll probably just suffer more of the side effects and warfarin when we're going to have prolonged bleeding. And remember that it prolongs the QT interval, and especially in use with macrolids and fluoroquinolones. Patient teaching. We want our patients to take this medication as prescribed and do not double dose if you miss a dose. Do not take this with grapefruit. Do not stop taking abruptly. We want them to consult their physician or a pharmacist if they're taking any over-the-counter or herbal supplements. And it can cause photo photosensitivity and photophobia. So remember they should wear sunglasses and sunscreen and we want them to report the side effects immediately to their physician. And we want to teach them how to check their heart rate and rhythm before they take this. And they can do that by using a little pulse ox to check the heart rate because we wanna make sure that it's over 60. And they can palpate their pulse. And if it's you know irregular or, um, and, you know, Apple, watches now, they can do the little um, rhythm check on there. So we can teach them to use these other tools. And I will tell you that I have had a patient that came in because her Apple watch told her she was having an arrhythmia. She did the little test on it and she was in atrial fibrillation. So she came in and we fixed her. Now our challenge question this week, this is a hard, well, this could be a hard one. So your patient is admitted for AFib RVR. And the physician orders amiodarone, 150 milligrams and 100 mLs of D5W IV bolus to infuse over 10 minutes. Then to start the infusion at one milligram per minute for six hours, then decrease to 0.5 milligrams a minute for 18 hours. How many milligrams per mL are in the bolus? And how many mLs per hour will you program the pump for, for the bolus? Make sure to leave your answers in the comments on our Facebook page, and you will be entered to win a $25 Amazon gift card. So I hope you like this week's Med Monday. If you haven't already signed up to receive the Med Mondays, you can go to nursingschoolsimplified.com forward slash Med Monday, and I'll send them every week to you along with the med fact sheet that you can use as a study tool or to create your drug cards for your clinicals. So I hope you guys have a great week and keep working on your dreams.